backdrop of this is I've got a lot of saws that I had built for research, you know? I, I don't know whether or not uh, it makes sense to folks, but what I would do is I would build these darn things and then send them out to loggers and let them kill them. And then come back and tear them apart and learn, you know, what I had done that could be done better. And with the aftermarket ones, it seemed like pretty much every one of the 372s I built where I pumped them up a little bit, either with compression or RPMs, port timing, um, they would take out the aftermarket cranks. This was no exception. It took out the rod bearing. Pretty. This one, it took a little time. I mean, I ran it for probably six months, and then I put it in the hands of a professional logger, and he ran it for another six. Then it came back rattling pretty good and realized it had taken out the rod bearing. But it earned its money. This was one where I wanted to see whether or not the mods that I was doing on the OEM saws would kill an aftermarket saw. This was actually that um, Farmer Tech or Hudsel G372XT. That's what this cylinder came from. And uh, so I went and just did my normal thing. I kind of roughed it out. I could have done more. Cut the skirt back and radius the, the, the bottoms of the transfers and stuff like that. Gutted the intake. Just basically what I do to a, an X Torque, you know. And I did it kind of ugly, you know. I usually spend a little more time on the OEM versions. But I was just curious. I just wanted to see how well that saw was going to re respond to it, number one, and how long it was going to last, number two. It was pure research. And it, it performed quite well. And eventually came back, like I said, with a, a bad rod bearing. So, you know, I've done the same with 562s, and now I'm doing the same with the 550s. And uh, what happens is after a couple of years of doing stuff like that, you begin to realize what you can get away with, what you can't. And then, uh, but then you also have a whole pile of bones. <laughs> but they were fun. You know, what can I say? So, anyway, uh, during that process, though, I found a few things that pretty much are standard approaches for me, you know. One is a slight increase in compression, and there's a variety of ways of doing that. One being trimming the base of the cylinder on the lathe, which I've done. I built a bunch of tooling to do that on a couple of different cylinders. Another one's a pop-up. And uh, a third one is this, and that's what I wanted to get into, is I found some pretty exciting products, I think. These are really cool. These little pop-up pistons from Little Red Barn. And I've had decent luck with them. I've put them in a couple of 562s and a 555 that went out to a tree service. And I hadn't had them come back broke. The feedback I've had is they run really good, you know. But what I was doing with these was getting the squish down to about 20 thousandths. And in order to do that, I was cutting a thin gasket, a 10 thousandths gasket. Then I found these on eBay, which is a 14 thousandths gasket for just a couple of bucks. So I'm hooked. I'm going to start using those instead of cutting a gasket up by myself. It's a much better done job than what I do. One of those elbow grease type modifications. I guess the things I wanted to put on video on this one right here is these thin gaskets are great for me on the 562, 555 series saws because the stock gaskets are 30 thousandths. These are 14. So I'm picking up 15 thousandths right off the bat. And it's the same as you milling 15 thousandths off the base of the cylinder. You get the same thing. It moves the cylinder down. And that along with the uh, pop-ups from Little Red Barn, it's a, it's a measurable difference in the way it runs. Both when you do cookie cuts, but also when you check the compression. It's about 20, 25 pounds different after I've done those modifications. They run good. They run good. I like it. The only problem I have on my 562s that I've done this kind of mod, most of them I cut my own gaskets. I'm going to build one this week, I think, with one of these. Is if you don't use the decomp, you will break the starter. It just simply doesn't have the strength required. These guys, these things right here break. If you don't use a decomp after you've jacked compression on those saws, those chainsaws. So the pop-up, 
thin gasket, cheap hop-ups for 562, plus the muffler mods like I've done in the past. You can check my videos for that. And, and those saws, they scream. They run good once you've made those modifications. Of course, they run good stock. And then on the x -torques, um I've done this modification like I showed where basically I gut the intake, you know, the filter holder, intake boot, the uh, intake port, stuff like that. And then, as I said before, I cut the skirts and I radius the bottoms of the transfers. It makes a huge difference when you get the squish down to like 20 thousandths. But the other thing is, if you're looking, you know, one of the things that you get on these is if you've noticed on other, so this one here had particles go through the, the piston. But if you're looking at that piston, what are you not seeing? You're not seeing that accelerated wear on the intake side that you see on every other X-Torque that you're going to see. Because when I've done this modification, instead of having raw air going through those, because I've got the dividers out of the intake boot and the filter holder, basically you're getting a gas-air mix into both the stratos and the intake port. You're getting uh, lubrication to the back side of the piston. And uh, I can tell you over the years, it's again, something is demonstrable, the difference in the way the piston wears by doing a mod like this. The downside to this modification that I've done my God, now since like 2013, 14, is they will use more fuel, no doubt. It's not as fuel efficient as a standard X Torque. But I don't know. I think I'm going to grind on this more and do it right. I'm going to radius on these more, and I think I'm going to pull out that crank, clean up those set of cases, and throw another crank in there. They're aftermarket, right? Who cares? But if it screams and makes the right kinds of noises and cuts chips, it'll be fun. So, anyway, let me close this off and then uh, go get some kerosene, clean up some of this crap on my bench. I think what I'm going to do is bust that apart and put a crank in it. So that's what I do to the intake port. So the cylinder gets that kind of knife edged right there. Uh, these radius, that radius, skirts cut out, and then... The uh, intake boot, got the intake boot, and uh, got the filler holder. Let's take a look at this again. And it works. I've done this for a long time, and uh, it really works. So that's what I do on 372X torques to turn them into a work saw. And then if I got a guy who's wanting to make them really scream, I'll go in there and, and work the exhaust to bring the roof back up, and I'll go back and mess around with the... the this one here, it looks like I did mess around with the transfers, but you can't really see. But anyway. So, what do you think? I think I should clean all that crap up and see if I can <laughs> put another crank in that saw and let it run some more? What do you think? Maybe get rid of this piston and put a pop-up in there. Put a base gasket in there. Huh. So, anyway. Short video. X-Torque. Mods. Thin gasket, pop up pistons. I don't know. That's just simple stuff that anybody can do. I think I'm going to leave it at that. Man, I think I am. I think I'm going to tear that thing down. I mean, I like the cylinder, looks like it's salvageable, you know? Let me just tear it apart and put a different crank in there and throw it back together and see if it runs another six months on me because like I said it was a screamer saw when I when I had it put together it was surprisingly fast 
So anyway, tidbits. I don't know how much of that I'm going to put together as a video, but picking through bones, picking through bones.